silent the last time. <laughs> silent the last time. <laughs> Whatever he says, do not ask him. Hey everyone, I'm here with uh, the filmmakers in town from uh, my dinner with Hervé, which is an HBO film, a uh, wonderful film. Wanted to get uh, a couple thoughts from you about the fantasy island element of this. I mean, you do, how important is it to know fantasy island to engage with this story? I would submit not crucial, but I'm just curious how you guys feel and how you approached it. Absolutely irrelevant. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Hopefully you enjoy that. You really. can enjoy it if you've never even heard yeah, of this. I didn't know anything. I, yeah. I was aware of fantasy island, but where I grew up, we didn't get it. It wasn't on our TVs, I guess. So um, I feel like that wouldn't, yeah, that wouldn't have an effect on. Uh, it was a cool aspect. We didn't have TVs in Ireland. <laughs> Cold storage in Ireland. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with fires, though. So you could have made a movie about any 80s. Right. Yeah. TV actor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which would be that. Was Conrad Baines. Did Meyer. you cycle through yeah. several? several. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, there's an origin story here. We could probably be on Facebook for hours detailing it. Um, so we can distill it down, though. I mean, because. The gentleman here joined Jan along the way. You, you've sort of seen it all the way through. But um, I guess maybe start with, with Peter and then we can bring Jamie into it. How did you guys first connect? Um, Sasha came to see me in a play years ago and brought me a 25 page script called My Dinner with Urban. Um, and it was incredible. But it was one of those things of uh, it was 25 pages. What is the audience for short films before the internet, really? Um, and it was a movie that looked like the most expensive short film ever made. Um, how you doing? Um, how you doing? Um, and so I sort of went, this is like one of the greatest things I've ever read. How the hell are you going to get this made? But I, I'm in. Right. I'm all in right. if you actually are able to get this made. Right. Because um, I was a penniless young theater actor back then. Um, now I could have self-financed. Yeah, you could, you could have played with all of I would have had a checkbook out. <laughs> uh, um, and then so, actually, serendipitously, it took many years, and then actually it was a time in my life where actually I'm glad that the time had passed where I was age-appropriate yeah. and um, yeah. uh, enough to play the part. Yeah, and then, and then Jamie, how uh, far along into this journey? Well, I mean, what Pete's talking about is like, Fifteen years ago, um, yeah. he was nine. You were not age appropriate. He was, nine, so <laughs> he was not age appropriate. He was eating a carton without television. <laughs> so, okay. uh, no, I wasn't ready. You couldn't have really. Yeah, no, it was one of those things where I, it was already very much set up by the time. Uh, I mean, I think there've been different variations uh, of uh, the script, and there've been other actors who were maybe going to do it at different times. We can say that um, idiots. Total idiots, like none of them are working on Talent as well. They're all the careers in the gutter. Yeah. Um, they're working at Dairy Queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I put in it was a lot of time. It was a lucky timing thing for me. I came, like, this guy was already on board. Big fan of Sasha's. Um, and my. Big fan of Sasha's. <laughs> so, um, it was all just, yeah, it was easy. Was and what about the layer of playing Sasha as fact today? Well, it's good because, in a way, I never felt truly like I was playing him and I'm very glad I didn't feel like that. Because Sasha, although we're depicting a version of events that happened in his real life, um, my character's never called Sausage Bass, he's always called Danny Tate. Um, we decided that uh, he could be Irish in it and uh, so we did a lot of things to sort of separate it from, from you know, being Sasha's story, which I think was healthy for so many reasons, you know. And it would, um, it would have been impossible for me to, to, you know, direct it, so it had to be a case of Jamie taking possession of it and making it his own and doing it, you know, in his own way, because otherwise I think it would have been possible for, actually for both of us to sort of allow yeah. the story to come through. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, as, <laughs> they have killed each other. as you were writing, did you have anybody in mind? It's sort of an odd question, given um, that it's your know. story. It, yeah. it, it, it's hard. It became, it, it became its own thing. You know, you have a, a personal experience that you feel and that no one else really cares about. Right. You have to sort of find a way to dramatize it. Right. And I think just in the process, the character of Danny Tate emerged, and the other was factual. But ultimately, he you was know, a very different character. And I think Jamie stepped into it with a, with a, with a confidence and a knowledge that that really only he had. I mean, in fact, if you're writing a script correctly, 
the moment the actor takes possession of the role and becomes it, they know more than you do. That's how it should be. They should know more. So I, I was very open to that, and I think he made it his own thing, and that was great for me to to not have to be responsible to you know to serve some kind of version of yeah. something, and it was just it could become its own thing, and they could discover their own relationship. And I think largely that's why I really am very proud of the film is because they took it somewhere completely different. You know, they, they took it to the place they took it to. Thanks. I think we're good. Thanks, gentlemen.